Hey everyone, welcome back to Python uh, slash Linux. Um, in this chapter, we're going to continue, or this lecture, I should say chapter, video chapter. Uh, we're going to continue on with our uh, command line uh, learning. Um, we're getting towards the end of that, um, but we're going to look at loops. Um, so instead of having to do a single function, uh, type it out to do it over and over and over again, we're going to write a function that uh, automatically does that or commands, I should say, that automatically do that. Um, so um, let's go ahead, check it out. All right, so let's open the terminal. Um, so as I said, loops are commands that allow us to repeat uh, the same function or task um, over and over for every item in a list or within a folder. Um, so it makes it a lot easier than having to do it man manually. So we're going to be using um, the Car yeah, Car Carpentry uh, examples again. Um, and so uh, they have it set up where they have um, this idea where you have um, these three different organisms, a basilisk, a minotaur, and a unicorn for you uh, fantasy people out there. Um, so in the, um, if we go to the data that we downloaded, we're going to go to CD, uh, desktop, classroom, my files, and then it was, uh, data shell, and then exercise, or no, um, shell lesson data. If we look again, um, we're going to go to exercise data. Again, uh, and then we're gonna go into this creatures. Oh. Creatures. All right. Um, so as you can see, we have basilisk.dat, minotaur.dat, and unicorn.dat. Um, and so let me clear this. Let's just okay. So for those of you wondering where I am, that's where I am. Um, all right. So let's look head. We're gonna say head n5 for basilisk.dat, minotaur.dat, and unicorn.dat. Um, so as you can see, um, we have uh, these different, uh, these five data files that have the top five lines, right? So we have uh, this basilisk, which they have a classification for, the date that it was updated, um, and then two lines of uh, nucleotides, it appears. And so the same thing for minotaur.dat, we have the common name, which is minotaur. It's called bos hominis. Uh, and then we have the unicorn, uh, equus, monoceros, <laughs> etc. So, um, let's see. All right, so for each file, um, we'd have to execute, um, What if we just want to get uh, the classification of each of these uh, from each of these? Um, so what we can do um, is we can create this loop. Um, so let's do four thing in list of, oops, yep, of things do uh, I 
actually, <laughs> that's the uh, setup thing here. So hold on, let's do. Okay, so hey, my clothes worked that time. <laughs> All right, uh, here, let's do that. All right. So this is how it's set up. Um, so for file name in basilisk.dat, minotaur.dat, unicorn dot dot dat do echo file name head to file name tail and one dot okay so what is this doing? Um, so in this example, we have three files, file names, right? So we have the Basilisk, the Voss Hominis, and the Equus Monoceros, or actually it's the Basilisk, the Monotar, Minotaur, and then the Unicorn. So each time the loop iterates through our folder, um, we first use echo right here, this command, uh, to print the value that the variable file name currently holds. Okay, so we're saying echo or print whatever is stored in file name. Um, so next, uh, we assign the name. Uh, to the variable, or we assign a file to the name variable and run the head command. Okay, so uh, what it's saying is for file in, for file name in either Basilisk or Mintar or Unicorn Dat, print whatever is in the file name, but the, at the first time there's nothing. Um, and then whatever is in the file name, run the head command. So for the first time through the loop, file name is this basilisk.dat. And the interpreter runs the command head on that and pipes the first two lines uh, to the tail command, which then prints the second line of it. So um, let's look up here. Okay, so what we're doing is, loops can be confusing. So uh, let's try to explain it with uh, our data up here. So for file name in basilisk.dat, minotaur.dat, unicorn.dat. So what's saying is for each of these three file names, basilisk.dat, minotaur.dat, and unicorn.dat, all right? Do echo file name. So the first thing it says, first store, whatever one we're on of the three, best list that dot in the name file name, okay? The next line it says, now take the head, the first two lines of file name. So in this case, our first one we iterate through is basilisk.dat. So take the first two lines of basilisk.dat and then apply another command, piped, to those first two lines. Which is the tail. So if we, excuse me, if we look at these, we're saying first things, I oh, will do basilisk. First things first, do the first command for basilisk dot, 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 which is to say the head of basilisk dot, dot, which head two, the first two lines, right? So that's now what we're working with. And it says, having those two lines, now let's do tail, n minus one. So if we look at this, the tail, n minus, or the n one of the tail, the last line would be this right here, right? Classification, uh, Bacillus vulgaris. And then we're done. And then it loops again. It says, okay, now for file name in these three, so we've already done the first file name, basilisk.dat. Uh, now for minotaur.dat, do 
echo file name. So it stores minotaur.dat in the file name variable. Then it runs head, the first two lines of minotaur.dat, which if you look up here, would be these two lines. And that says, now that we have those two lines, run tail on those two lines, which would be this right here. And then we're done. And so it prints, as you can see here, for minotaur.dat, this boss hominis. And then we have one more file to do, right? So for file name in these three, so for all three of these file names, we've done the first two. Now we do unicorn.dat. We do echo the file name. So we say what the file name is, and that's what's how it prints it down here. And then we run head on the file name. So we have the first two lines, like we did before, and then tail on those first two lines. So if we look at the unicorn data up here, we have the first two lines are these two, and then we run tail, which is just this one, tail with one line, and then we're done. So that's it. I hope that explains how they work. <laughs> it takes some time. Uh, I, I tell you, I picked up a lot of the stuff very quick, except for loops. It took me some time. So if you don't really understand them, um, and if, if you're kind of confused, feel free to ask questions um, in our uh, discussion board or, or let me know um, because it, it took some time to get used to. Um, but it's not the worst thing in the world. It's not gonna like be make or break for you learning the stuff. Like if you don't know loops, you're, it's not like, oh no, you can't learn Python. You can still manage it without it. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Um, so, where do we want to go from here? All right, let's clear this out. Okay, so. We still have our three data files. Um, so when we're using variables, um, it's also possible to put the names into curly braces, um, which are uh, these guys. No, nope, sorry, these guys. Um, to clearly de uh, delimit the variable names. So, um, for example, file name is the same thing as file name, um, right? It doesn't, I'm, that's obviously not gonna do anything. But as you can see, so um, this is just the prompt, right? So if we say uh, file name is the same thing as file name, like that, um, but it's different from that right um, so sometimes you'll see this notation in, in some people's programs or, or shell scripts or things like that um, so it's important to uh, just know that that's uh, something that exists when people are making these loops okay um, let's write the same loop in two different ways. So for x in basilisk.dat, minotaur.dat, unicorn.dat. Okay, so just like before, we're saying for every variable that we're looking at in these three different basilisk.dat, minotaur.dat, and unicorn.dat, we're going to say do, so do something. We say head to x tail one done. Okay, so what, knowing what you know, what do you think this script does? I'll give you a second to think about this way drink my lifeblood here. So, th 
these variables. So before we had for every or for file name in Basilisk, blah, 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 blah. Um, these variables are just, it's like algebra. They can be anything, right? So you can say, you know, um, 3x plus b equals 12, or you can say 3 alpha plus potato equals 12, and the commands, the variables, it doesn't really matter, right? They just are placeholders. So the same thing with this. So if we run this, um, maybe I should spell stuff right before I run it. Um, so you can see uh, the only thing we're missing is uh, it runs the same thing essentially except for um, we don't have um, we didn't print out the echo part okay so if we do this 4x and on um, basilisk minotaur da 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 do head uh, minus 2 tail head to tail one and then done. So if we write, what if we write this for temperature, basilisk dot dat, minotaur dot dat, minotaur dot dat, to head and to of temperature, tail, and one, done. So what do you think this does? It does the same thing, right? So whatever we can call it a variable, whatever you want. And we can call it uh, for my name, for VDB in Basilisk, do whatever, head, blah, 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 of VDB, tail, etc. cetera. So, um, it's, What you want to do, though, is you want to make readable programs. That's important. So don't, I want to show that the variable names don't matter except in processing the code. But what they do matter in is readability. And so it's important. So if I were to give this code to you, this last one, the temperature one, and you're taking it and you're like, oh, I, I need to run this code on my stuff. And then you look at it and you're like, for temperature, you'd be confused to be like, there's no temperature data in this. Why, what is it pulling for temperature? And it's just confusing, right? Um, and the same thing, um, and I'm guilty of this, um, with using just like X. It's fine, it works fine, um, but you might wanna use something more descriptive than just X. Um, Cause if you have multiple loops and they're all X, then things start going, people get very confused um so having something like um file name um or for what's that what would be another good one for species or something like that um that is applicable to your analysis um, and kind of readable um, is, is better practice because if you do get um, you know to the point where you're giving these to other people to use um, it's best to have something that's fairly readable right um, okay so that's kind of it for um, the loop stuff um, actually no we're gonna Let's ratchet it up a notch here, make something a little more complicated. All right, so um, for file name in, okay. So we're starting with for file name in asterisk.dat do echo file name head and 100 file name. Tail twenty done. So before I run this, knowing what you know, 
what would you think that this does? Again, I'll pause dramatic effect and let you think based on our previous one. So it's just a modification of our previous loop, right? Okay, so let's run it. As you may have guessed, what we have here says for file name in asterisk.dat. So if you recall from our previous, um, I forget what lecture, a couple, one or two lectures ago, this just means anything that ends with dot dat. So as we know from um, working on the previous ones, we have three files that have dot dat, right? So instead of us, when we create the like header to this, loop or the first line of this loop code, instead of having to list every file, we can say, okay, we know that the only thing we want to run this in, we just want to run it on all the dot dat files, right? So we can say for file name in dot dat, do echo file name, so that means print the file name, and then give us the head, the top 100 lines of the file name, but then only give us the last 20 of that first 100. Right, so we're doing, so give us lines 80 through 100, right? Or 81 through 100. And then done. And then it goes back and it says, okay, is there another file that ends with dot dat that I haven't done yet? Yes, that is minotaur.dat. Then it says, okay, do echo the file name. So it wrote minotaur.dat and it says take the first 100. Uh, lines of that file and then take the last 20 of that first 100 uh, and then print those etc so yeah uh, let's see uh, so Um, all right, so one thing to note for this loop that there that is pointed out by these wonderful beta carpentry people. So if we say echo hello there, you can see that it prints out hello there, right? And so echo is just print. So if you take an R um, with me, you know that print, uh, the command print prints things on the screen, right? And so echo, uh, the same thing, right? Um, and so, the same thing I should say for terminal, uh, for bash. Uh, so if we do for file name in, we do the same asterisk dat, and then we do do, and then we say file name instead of print file name, we say head 100 file name and pipe it and say tail 20 and then done. So what happens is we get this command not found, right? And so what that means is because we didn't call or because we didn't call um, echo for that line, uh, where are we at here? It tries, it's thinking, okay, this is a program, not print the name of this file. It's thinking, run this file. And that file isn't an executable, right? It's a .dat file, which is essentially a text file that we call .dat. Um, and so um, it's important that if you want to print stuff that you use echo um, in the terminal, because otherwise you're gonna get unicorn.dat command not file, et cetera. Um, uh, okay, so we're going to come back to more, finish up some loop stuff, um, but I'm at my 24 minutes um, that I want to keep things nice and tidy at 20 minutes. You all seem to like that. Um, so, um, like I said, um, partway through the video, if you don't understand loops, it took me a little bit of time 
um, because it was never explained to me well. Hopefully I've explained it to you well and, and you're like, yeah, this makes perfect sense. Um, but if, if it's frustrating stuff, don't worry about it. But I guess I, it took me a couple years to be comfortable with loops. Um, and they can, even if you understand the simple things too, Loops can be very hairy, right? Because you can iterate through things um, if you're like writing the files and stuff. Um, it can be dangerous um, because you're not just messing up one file in a folder. You're setting this command to be like, you know, avalanche <laughs> to go through your folder and just mess everything up. I've had those experiences. Um, and so, um, not to be scared of them, but like just know that um, you need to be careful of them because. to process a lot of data, but they can also mess up a lot of data because they have to process it. And process it. So, um, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed the lecture. Um, if you have questions, um, post them in the comments or, um, you know, discussion. Um, but we'll continue. We'll do a couple more examples of this probably uh, in the next video, and then we'll be on to uh, our next topic. So uh, if you're watching YouTube, hit like, hit subscribe. And I will catch you in the next one.